editing my video. I hope you like that little introduction. I realize I don't have a proper segue into the making of the costume, so I wanted to mention that before I worked with the craft foam, I do have a pattern that you can print at home on your own printer on like a letter sized piece of paper. This is the same pattern that I made for myself and that I use, and you can adjust it according to your size, but it is very useful. I highly recommend that if you are making this suit, you download this because I think the patterning was 100% the hardest part of making this costume. Everything else was like just a lot of puzzling fun. Also, I am filming this after I finished the costume and after I already did some like photo shoot with it and I posted pictures and the official Dune movie social media shared it. So I think that is a pretty cool stamp of approval. <laughs> I'm so excited about that. So now if you use my pattern, you can say you have the same costume shared by the official Dune page, which is uh, pretty cool. And I think the best part about the still suits is that they all look almost the same. So no matter what character you be, you can use this. And I'll note it is for the front only. The back is covered by a cape, so I didn't worry about that. But you can add to it if you want, easy peasy. So once the patterning is taken care of, we can get straight to the crafting. <laughs> Let's do it. First, I cut out all the pattern pieces onto foam. I start with the chest plate and I just lay all the pieces together to get an idea of where they go. I made some of the tubing by hot gluing strips of craft foam around a small rope. I did this before I got some pre-made foam dowels from the Yaya Han line because I didn't know I could just go pick some up from Joanne. I definitely preferred working with the pre-made foam dowels, but the amount you need can get pricey and some people might not have time or access to get it, so I thought I would share with you this alternative. I cut off the excess foam and it leaves me with this half circle strip. To make much smaller tubing, I just fold strips of craft foam directly in half and I cut off the excess foam and I'm left with this. Then I take a pin and mark where I will be adding the tubing. Then I use hot glue and lay all the strips down on the marked areas. I also add some smaller details by cutting and heating up a piece of foam. Then I take the tubing I made and I add it to these strips from the pattern. And I put all the pieces back together with the new details added. I also outline some of the detailing with a pen to add definition to the edges. And to make braised edges, I cut thin strips of craft foam and glue them down. Then I keep gluing the various pieces together. and I add the tubing whenever it's needed. I use various different glues like hot glue and spray Loctite super glue. Some of the detailing has texture underneath, so I scrapped some fabric from a jacket.
I also use that same fabric to make little straps that I weave through the pieces. To make a raised area, I just use a thicker piece of foam and glue it underneath. And I add strips along the edges of some pieces as well. I also use hot glue to make studs, but you can do anything you want for that. Here I'm using a Dremel tool to make indentations into the foam pieces for the arms. For curved pieces like the shoulders, I take strips of foam and glue them to the underside to hold the slits together which create the curve. And just keep gluing pieces together and adding edges and detailing until you're done. So, I have been working on the armor a lot um, for the past two days. Day one, I just kind of was working on the patterning and day two I cut out all the foam and I glued all the pieces together I'm going to show you what I have so far so right now I have the base of the chest plate which goes right here and then over that I think I'll call this like the rib cage area it's gonna go right around here this is the crotch guard and then hip pads there's also some shoulder pads and then there's the knee pads. There's these uh, little things that go on the inside of the elbow. And then these, I have like four of these pieces. These go on the sleeve of the arm. And then there's these pieces that look like, they go on the leg. And I think that's all I need for the armor. Oh my God, I'm getting hot again. So I'm going to coat all the armor in some Plasti Dip and then I'm going to paint it and detail it. Hopefully I can do that all tomorrow in one day. So this would be a three day build. That would be awesome. I don't wanna get into painting it tonight because I just don't feel like it at this hour of the night. So I'm gonna just get to the fabric work instead. And I have a bunch of stuff that I got from the thrift shop, hold on. Okay, I don't remember if I said a bit or a bunch, but I got a bunch of stuff from the thrift shop. So what I went for were items that are like this beige, gray, color i don't really know what the actual color is i know it does have a name i just can't think of it right now these are like stretchy pants which i think will be perfect for underneath because it looks like the pants are two different layers i'll probably use one of these pairs of pants to put over it as the second layer oh my god and she has like this shawl or cape or something and there was this dress and it's like the perfect fabric and i'm so excited that i found it because this is only like four dollars i also found like this sport jacket and the best part about it is it has this big chunk sorry for all the dog hair this big chunk of fabric on the back with like these uh like the bumps or something which it seems like a very consistent part of this costume like the tubes and the lines as you can see i already started scrapping it for fabric and I use it for the straps on this. You can see in here I used it and here I used it. So it already has come in handy. I definitely have a lot of work to do trying to figure out how everything's gonna attach and the movement and the mobility and all that fun stuff. But I have to wait for it to be painted first, which I'm doing tomorrow. Um, and I'm gonna get to work on the fabric stuff now. Before I go, I also wanted to mention I got these shoes. That's it. Okay, bye. <laughs> I'm laying out all the pieces so you can see how they will be placed. Now it's time to paint the base coat. 
I use black Plasti Dip and apply about three or four layers and let it dry between each coat. Note, before this, I did go over all the foam lightly with a heat gun to prep it for painting, but that's optional. While that dries, I'm going to work on the fabric pieces. First, I put on the stretchy pants. Then, I put on the looser, thicker pants and I trace the areas that I need to cut off. I cut off the excess fabric, and I fold the edges over and sew them down to finish them. Next, I take another pair of pants and slide it on my arm to make a sleeve. Then, I cut off the excess fabric, run a stitch through it to fit it around my arm better. I cut off the excess fabric again, then fold the sleeves right side in. And this is what I'm left with. I trace the area I need to end the sleeve at and finish the edges. Then I take all the leftover fabric from the pants and I use it to make a shirt. Any basic shirt pattern should work. Then I take the sleeves I just made and attach them to the rest of the shirt. And I use chalk to mark where I need to add all the detailing. Then I begin gluing pieces on. There's tubing detailing on the leg that I made by cutting this leaf shape out of fabric. And I take the Yaya Han Eva Foam dowels and cut them in half to make them go farther. Then I glue them all down to the fabric. I attached all the crotch and hip pieces together with straps. Then I take some more tubing detailing I made and add them to those pieces. And I attach the leaf shaped tubing details to the pants. Next, I mark all the areas with chalk that I need to add detailing to the pants. cut out the marked areas so I can add the details underneath, then I glue everything on. I don't even know if you can hear me, but in the slight chance that you can, people always comment in my, co oh my God. Whew. People always yell at me in my comment section saying, if you are going to be spray painting, you need to wear a mask. Guys, my face, isn't on camera most of the time when I'm painting, but I do own one and um, I'm gonna wear it right now. You have proof, so please don't yell at me. Everything's gonna be okay. Crisis averted. <laughs> anyway, right now I am going to take the rest of the scraps of fabric from the pants and I'm going to glue them to the back of pieces of foam and these are just like little boot covers because the boots have a bunch of different weird layers and I think this will be the easiest way to accomplish that so that's what I'm doing. I attach the fabric to the foam with some Loctite spray glue. And I do this to about six pieces that are gonna be layered on top of each other. I also finally got around to making the mask and ran out of black foam, so I used white instead. And I just coat it with black Plasti Dip like I did with the rest of the suit. Once that piece is dry, I attach it to the other pieces that I covered in scrap fabric. So, I just wanted to update you on how it's going. I did finish making everything, so I'm very happy about that. I didn't finish everything, I just finished building it and making it. 
it's all totally wearable that's usually the part i dread the most because like there's so many different ways you can put things together and just to like figure out how to do that is kind of stressful but it all fits it all goes on it looks great it's really cool i'm going to show you what it looks like on before i paint it so you can see the difference between the before and after of painting anyway i'm going to put it on and show you what i got So here it is on. It looks so cool. Now I'm going to show you the dressing process and how I put all the pieces on. The boot covers just connect with Velcro in the back. The crotch guard and hip plates are all attached as one piece and it has an elastic strap that buckles in the back. And these flaps on the hips also connect in the back with a buckle. I made a little scarf that velcros in the back. And the chest plate has elastic straps that buckle in the back. And velcro that attaches the lower half together. The mask has a buckle attached at the end of the straps. and I just added an extension to the wrist of these gloves that Velcro closed. I cut the dress apart and attached strips of fabric together to create this cape. And this is what it looks like with everything on. Since I wanted the fabric to look weathered and all match the same color, I watered down some acrylic craft paint to the desired color and I applied it all over the fabric areas. Here you can see one of the legs of the pants painted and unpainted and the big difference it makes. I also lightly brushed over all the foam pieces with some light tan paint to look like dust and sand. I made the tighter pants darker with watered down paint. I added black detailing on the indentations of some of the foam pieces to make them more defined. And I painted the shoes the same color as the rest of the fabric. I also did the same with the gloves. and the mask as well. Then I went over all the rest of the foam pieces to make them look weathered and dusty by lightly brushing on sand colored paint. Then I went in the crevices and indentations with black paint to make the details really stand out. And then you're done with the painting process. <laughs> okay, so I finished painting everything. Do you like my hat? <laughs> it's all right here. Everything's dry. Uh, all the pieces are attachable and adjusted so they fit. I weathered it to make it look like it's been worn in the desert. So uh, that was such a fun process. My favorite process of anything is always painting because one, I just like painting. It feels very therapeutic. And two, it's usually the final steps. So <laughs> I get very excited about that step because I know I'm close to the finish line when I'm there. Here you can see like I painted all the fabric pieces to be way more cohesive with each other because they were all kind of like a bunch of different tones and now they like match almost perfectly and I made them look really weathered as well as like the armor you can see there's like some uh, light dry brushing on edges to make it look like it's just like a little sandy and a little dusty and 
a little beaten and worn. I flipped the hat around because I don't even know why I'm wearing it. I'm inside, I don't need a hat. It's just fun to wear. <laughs> anyway, this is probably one of the coolest suits I've ever made just because like it was so many different pieces and different layers. And although I love the idea of um, drinking your own sweat and urine, um, very resourceful. It's not a functioning suit, it's just for looks purely. So unfortunately, if you wanna drink your own bodily fluids, you gotta do that the old fashioned way. Um, anyway, <laughs> I did already try everything on and it fits perfectly. And by the time I post this, there will be patterns available for the suit. So you can just like skip that agonizing process of pattern making and get straight to the fun stuff. It's the same exact pattern I made and used a couple days ago. To be honest, I think the patterning was 100% the hardest part of this costume. Surprisingly, this costume is relatively easy to make. Like, I know it's really daunting and like there's so many layers and so many details, but the layers are flat. And as long as you have all the patterns you need and know where everything goes, it's actually a pretty quick process. I think I spent three or four days on this. I'm not 100% sure because I did so much so fast. It's kind of all been a blur. Um, I'll know by the time this video is being edited how many days I spent on it. So I'll add that here. And if you wanted to make this and thought that it was going to be like some big, impossible, daunting project and don't think you have the skills for it, I promise you, you can make it. It actually was not that hard. If you can get your hands on some craft foam, some glue and some paint, you can make this costume. I believe in you, I know you can do it. Once you have the pattern, it's literally just putting a bunch of pieces together and none of them are like crazy dynamic shapes or have like wild finishing. This was just coated in some layers of Plasti Dip and then dry brushed with some tan paint. So I just hope that if you wanted to make it, now you have the motivation to do it. Now you have the resources. It's also surprisingly comfortable and wearable, so I cannot wait to wear it to an event and see like a bunch of other Dune cosplayers. That would be so cool. But yeah, I have a photo shoot coming up very soon, and the makeup I'm gonna try to replicate is Lady Jessica. I'm not gonna make a dedicated makeup tutorial for it. It's too much of a no makeup makeup look. So I will be inserting a little makeup part in the next clip and then I will be showing you the results of the photo shoot. I'm so excited to see them. I'm so excited for you to see them. So let's go! <laughs> To do her makeup that looks like she's not wearing any makeup, first I start with an even coat of foundation. Then I take a beige eyeshadow and contour around the tip of my nose to make it look sharper. And along the sides of my nose as well as above the tip. I look at reference photos of her face to try to recreate her bone structure. I also define my cupid's bow, my cheekbones, and my jawline. Then I add some shadow to my eyelids, and I switch to a more red shadow and darken around my eyes. I use a white eyeliner to line around the inner corners of my eyes. I go around that with a warm brown liner. Then I fill in my eyebrows. Next, I use a matte white powder and highlight the tip of my nose, between my eyebrows and my chin. Then I use a shimmering highlighter and highlight the top of my cheekbones, the tip of my nose, and above my lip. Then I take a black eyeliner and very lightly line my upper lash line, and I drag out a wing slightly to make my eyes look pointier. Then I take a warm brown eyeliner and line around my lips to recreate her lip shape. Then I go over that with some natural matte lipstick. And add some more definition with a warm brown liner pencil. Then I apply mascara lightly around my upper lashes. I darken my eyebrows a bit 
that I put in these colored contact lenses. They make a huge difference and I will add a link to where you can get them in the description. Next, I reshaped my forehead a little by filling in my hairline with a dark brown eyeshadow. And I dab a little bit of that in the corner of my lips. Then I put my hair in a low ponytail and that's pretty much it for the makeup. found this tutorial helpful and if you wanted to make this costume I hope it is a lot less daunting now if anything I hope this video showed you if I can do it you can definitely do it and I'm so excited to see what you guys come up with if you use this tutorial so if you post pictures or videos of it please tag me on social media so I can see it oh, nothing makes me happier than knowing that people are actually using my tutorials because I love making these videos and I love crafting and it makes me feel like we're crafting together when I know you're watching my tutorials while you make stuff. So thank you so much for watching. I have tons of other videos on my channel. If you guys are liking the more vlog style videos, please let me know in the comments. I've been getting a lot of good feedback on it so I'll keep it up because I enjoy talking to the camera. It makes me feel like I'm just talking to you and I will link other videos that I have been doing that in right here so you can watch those if you enjoy them. I hope you have an amazing Amazing night or day enjoy crafting and being creative and I will see you in the next video bye <laughs>